Hello, hello, and welcome to me wearing the same clothes I wore in the last video because it's been about 30 seconds since I did the last one in in real life. Uh, this is a review of A Picture of Dorian Gray, um, or The Picture of Dorian Gray, or should I say Oscar Wilde's most famous novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray, as this edition likes to say. First off, this is a, this is a fit cover. I got this when I first came to Canada. Uh, I, I love it. I mean, it's just such a dinky little sweet boy. I do love Oscar Wilde's most famous novel. I think that's just a very funny uh, description. It's fair to say I love this book. This will all be non-spoiler uh, because it, it's a wildly, it's it's a massively read. I think it has over a million reviews on, um, or like ratings on Goodreads. Yet when I posted and said that I finished this, I had either people saying, this is my favorite book, like this is one of my favorite classics, etc. Or I have not read this yet. Like so many people actually put, I have not read this, which is wild because I thought I was the only fucker in the entire world. I don't know who all these people are making me feel like I was the only person that hasn't read it, but um, it was fantastic. It is the story of, if you don't know, because whilst I am aware of Dorian Gray a lot in pop culture, I've made plenty of films about him. The guy's in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, for God's sake, like it, well, at least I think he's in the film version. I don't know if he's in the comic books. He's been around. And so the plot is that uh, good old Dorian Gray, he's a handsome gentleman, uh, one of the most handsome in town. And uh, there is a painter called Basil who has been painting a portrait of him and has fallen in love, is enamored. He's his muse. Dorian is the masterpiece that he is painting. And so the story begins with um, Basil painting, talking to his good friend, Lord... Harry Wooten, I think his name is. Harry or Henry, I always got it mixed up in my head. I think it's Harry. And um, Harry's like, I'd love to meet this guy. I, I need to meet this man. And Basil's like, no, I don't trust you to meet him because you're a, you're a scoundrel. Turn of events, or Dorian meets uh, Harry and uh, begins to be negatively impacted by Harry and his opinions. He has these theories. Quite often they are sexist and racist and and very off-putting yet the society all of the people in this upper class are are enamored by it they're kind of like i can't believe you'd say that but tell me more they are engrossed by harry's storytelling and dorian finds himself in the same position and uh, when this painting is finished dorian makes this this grand wish that uh, he he realizes how beautiful he is and he realizes harry is telling him that once he loses his beauty no one will want him anymore and so uh, in desperation, Dorian makes the kind of wish that uh, he wished that the, the, um, he, would, he would give his soul, he would give his life for the fact that the painting aged and he was able to keep the beauty rather than the, uh, the beauty always being in the picture. He wished that the, the painting would age for him. The story is very much the submission to gluttony of all kinds, the idea of being, being a just a bad person and it is wonderful to read the downfall of these characters the 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 way they treat others is so gorgeously and wittily told by Wilde I would describe this as an extremely accessible classic uh, I did not struggle to read it it's not something you're going to struggle over there are tedious elements around the prose where you kind of like you didn't need to describe it for that long uh, but that is a, a, a a sign of the times to say the least instead it's it's fantastically fantastically morbid and cruel it's a wonderful character study of um what what you can see happening now like the thing i loved about this book is that the way harry is treated in society the way he kind of he puts across these horrible opinions and everyone is gluttonous for it they want to hear more for him he's invited to everything because of his these theories he has and these philosophies that he preaches it feel, felt very much like um personalities like andrew tate and alex jones and pierce morgan you know rancorous fucking bastards there are unfortunately um some some uh i think there's one instance uh, that particularly comes to mind of um, xenophobic opinions kind of like racial um slurs distasteful to say the least but luckily in the terms of the book 
we are following horrible people. So when you read it, you go, that's fucking horrible. And you're like, because they're horrible fucking people. And so I don't think it's it's not one of those instances that it takes throughout the book and you're like, well, I meant to like this person and now they're saying this. This book instead is luckily where you're like, oh, this is even worse. Like, um, So from that instance, I think it, it works in, in tandem with what the book is doing. Nice and short, it was like 225 pages and uh, I... I I doused for it. I really flew for it because, like I said, it is not struggling prose. Yeah, to give you an idea of what the prose is like in terms of conversation, because I think that's where the book flourishes, is the interactions between the characters. Um, the way they talk, and you can really feel the atmosphere, and you can feel the time frame. I struggle to imagine books. I really struggle to imagine books. This one, I had vivid imagery of what things looked like, how people talked, this was a, a extremely intense, vivid read, and I almost never imagine when when I'm reading anything. So I think that is a big, just a big positive. And so this is the section where he, uh, the the Basil is describing the fact that he believes he's put too much of himself into the painting he's doing, um, and so Harry goes. Too much of yourself in it. Upon my word, Basil, I didn't know you were so vain, and I really can't see any resemblance between you with your rugged, strong face and your coal black hair, and this young Adonis, who looks as if he was made out of ivory and rose leaves. Why, my dear Basil, he is a Narcissus, and you, well, of course, you have an intellectual expression and all that. So it's got that upper, upper class English manner of speaking. It has great textual references, such as the Narcissus, who is the Greek hero who, um, his tragedy is that he looks at himself in the mirror and he can't take his eyes off himself in the mirror which of course when we know what happens with Dorian is a great bit of foreshadowing. Banged it out, it was great. The only negative I have about this entire book is one chapter. There is a chapter that is just a description of jewellery throughout time that is 20 pages long which when the book's only 225 pages is a pretty mad amount and it, it's just a description of different people's jewelries throughout time. I understand what it was doing in the narrative and the kind of the the references were meant to make between what's happening to the characters and th like people throughout history. I just didn't think it needed to be 20 fucking pages long. It could have been four, it could have been five and I would have been fine. 20 and I was gagging for it to end. It was the only part that felt tedious. Otherwise it was pure brilliance and would 100% recommend The Picture of Dorian Gray. It's one of my favorite classics now. If you, did, if you did enjoy, please do like, please do subscribe. Uh, once again, because this is new, please let me know how you feel about these shorter reviews. But as always, have a nice rest of your day.